I'm talking today to Paul Sprut of Nokia. Paul, we're talking here in Belgium where we're talking about the Gigabit Society. What role has copper technology got in that? Sort of what speeds are obtainable? Mm -hmm. Good afternoon, Brian. Uh, well, the speed obtainable is of course very much dependent on the flavor of DSL that's being used. So if we look today, Operators using VDSL2 are offering rates in the range of 20 to 70 megabit per second. Now an important element with VDSL2 is, as people know, crosstalk. So that makes that the bit rates uh, can fluctuate over time as a function of the number of active lines in the cable. Now here vectoring pops in nicely in the sense that vectoring is neutralizing the crosstalk and thus makes the bit rates predictable uh, for all users in the network. And with factoring, operators are today offering rates in the range of 50 to 100 megabit per second. Even, even more in the lab, you can uh, easily achieve 130 or 40 megabit per second. Uh, that's with the traditional uh, VDSL flavor, known as the Profile 17A. In 2015, the ITU has defined a new profile, Profile 35B. We have been referring to that SV Plus technology. And with that, uh, operators offer rates in the range of 150 to 250 megabit per second, even 300 megabit per second on short copper, uh, let's say less than 200 or 250 meters. Now, some operators are using uh, two pairs and they combine bit rates achievable on both pairs with VDSL bonding to double rates or to extend the reach of the service. So they can offer, for instance, 400 megabit per second using bonded V plus technology. And then there is GFAST that brings us really in the gigabit arena with rates up to one gigabit per second. Uh, using the initial 106 megahertz profile or even 2 gigabit per second with the more recent 212 megahertz profile. Uh, and is GFAST effectively the end game for copper technology? Is it the ultimate? Well, not really. Um, in fact, Nokia Bellabs has been doing research on what we used to call XGFAST, and here X stands for 10. And we have demonstrated that rates near uh, 10 gigabit per second are achievable on twisted pair. And we have done that using OR2 pairs with, in combination with time division duplexing, what is also the duplexing technique used on GFAST, or a single pair using what we called full duplex transmission, so where we transmit simultaneously an up and downstream direction using the full bandwidth. Now last year the, broad, uh, the ITU started a new project that's called G.MG FAST. MG FAST stands for Multi Gigabit FAST. It aims to provide rates uh, in the range of 2 to 10 gigabit per second on copper loops uh, less than 100 uh, meters. And um, this can be achieved by extending the spectrum to, for instance, 424 megahertz. So the initial specification will contain such a profile for both coax and twisted pair and also using some uh, innovative uh, transmission techniques such as full duplex transmission that will initially be specified for coax but that can be extended later on to twisted pair as well. What are the markets for GFAST? Where are you finding the most appeal for the technology? Well, GFAST is um, a valid technology uh, everywhere where there is uh, copper available, that's almost everywhere, and where the upgrade of existing VDSL users uh, is uh, practical as a next step towards um, fiber uh, towards every house. Now, also operators that use uh, or are deploying fiber to the home make use of GFAST technology in case uh, it's difficult to fiberize the building or to bring the fiber inside the house. Initially, um, so let's say 2011, 2012, we were thinking that GFAST would mainly be used very close to the end user, so where in, in a fiber to the distribution point or fiber to the building scenario. What we see today is GFAST is used with different topologies, uh, for instance, from existing cabinets, what BT is doing in the UK or from um, small pits or manholes in the outside plant, as NBN is doing in Australia, uh, or from MDUs, the traditional fiber to the building scenario, over twisted pair, what we see happening now in Japan, or even over coax, um, as we see in uh, North America. 
What about Interop? You know, how's that going and how does that benefit vendors? Mm -hmm. Interop is, uh, of course, a very important aspect uh, for operators, uh, for the whole market, in fact. So what happened is that the Broadband Forum uh, specified Interop tests. These are being executed by the University of New Hampshire. They have an Interop lab approved by the Broadband Forum. So they organize so-called Plugfest, GFAST Plugfest, attended by system vendors and chipset suppliers. Nokia has been attending since the start, that's back in 2015. The initial tests were using the 106 MHz profile. Today, UNH is testing with the more recent 212 MHz profile. So that's one thing. Uh, in parallel, the Broadband Forum also defined a so-called certification plan, certification project. And last year in June, the Broadband Forum announced the first series of products, GFAST, CPEs and DPUs, that successfully passed the certification tests. Uh, this included uh, products from Nokia. Uh, meanwhile, this test list has been extended. Uh, it can be consulted on the Broadband Forum website. That's a very important aspect, this certification. It existed already for PON technology. It's very new in DSL. And we expect that it will uh, facilitate the adoption of uh, GFAST in the market. So it looks like there's a lot more to come from the world of GFAST. Thank you very much for sharing that with us. Uh, with pleasure, Brian. Thanks.